So, Cleveland Brown fans, we won last night. And to be honest, I have to say the game was executed, the game plan was precise, and the Browns actually didn't blow a lead. And I know some fans was nervous, yeah, including me to a certain extent, that the Browns was going to, um, you know, find a way to lose a ninth, a ninth, no, I'm sorry, a six-point lead with less than uh, a minute and one second left, left in, the, in the fourth quarter. And um, basically, they had, to, of course, they had to, um, you know, still get the, get the field goal. And um, I, I believe that, yeah, they went for the onside kick. Yeah, it was an onside kick. And I, I, always, I already like to think that Browns fan was very, very, very pessimistic as far as the onside kick. And, you know, to everybody's surprise, <laughs> they almost blew the onside kick. But, okay, of course it goes out of bounds. So the Browns get the um, ball. At, at the spot at the spot where the ball went out of bounds at. So okay, Browns, you, of course they do. Yeah, finally they do. The one, you know, they finally do something that was basic common sense in my opinion. They run the ball, and they run the ball. Of course, the Steelers had one timeout, so the Steelers had to blow that timeout. And then, um, of course. They, you know, run the ball, and then uh, I think it was like, I want to say third, 30 inches, or maybe third and one or something like that. Maybe maybe it was third and, third and three. But they had the ball off to Nick Chubbs, and it appeared he got the first. They measured and everything and said, you know, first down ball, uh, first down Browns. And, of course, game over. Because all the Browns got to do is run the clock out. Oh, okay. So, as the Browns are, you know, preparing to do this, now there, there's, here comes an official review. And, yeah, what was it? Maybe 10, 20, 20 seconds into the review after it was all over, they overturned the – um first down that the Browns appeared to achieve. So, now the Browns got to pump the ball away because now it's fourth and inches. Now, me, I was, you know, saying, why don't y'all just go for it? Why don't y'all just end the game? It's fourth and inches. Get get this and it's over. But I'm glad, I'm glad, you know, they didn't do it because, you know, hindsight looking in, you know, hindsight looking now, um, yeah, I think that would have been a mistake. And I would have felt, you know, terrible that I even called for him to do it. So, you know, yeah, punt, actually, punting the ball was a good decision. Because it was like, you know, before they punted the ball, when it was 15 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And um, you got to take your chances on that. You got to take your chances on that. I mean... Even though Mitchell Trubisky was having a, you know, a decent game and, um, you know, the Steelers, of course, we know how to, we know what the Steelers are going to bring. We know what Mike Tomlin is going to bring. That's why the Steelers is always, you know, one, one of the teams that is um, selected to, to play in the postseason every season because of the discipline and the intelligence and, you know, the organization, the owner, and how they always put together a team that's always in contention for the playoffs and, yeah, the Super Bowl. And because of, you know, Mike Tomlin's brilliance is another reason why the Steelers are, you know, always picked every season to contend in the playoffs and even the Super Bowl. So, we, you already know that this was going to go down, you know, to the wire. It didn't necessarily go down to the wire like many thought it would, 
Because, I mean, yeah, the Browns was up six points. So, at that time, at the time, the score was 23-17. So, I mean, I would like to think logic would tell you that if you punt the ball off and it's 15 seconds of the game, you get ready to punt the ball off, logic would tell you that you should win this game. Let's just put it out there. You should win this game. There's no way in the world the Steelers should be able to move the ball in 15 seconds to score a touchdown to defeat, you know, defeat you. There, there shouldn't be no way that could happen unless something catastrophic happens. Like, say they, you know, they fumbled up, fumbled up, fumbled up uh, the snap or something. Or let's say he put the guy, the punter puts the ball and you know, it takes a, you know, he punts it in a way where it literally lands on the, what is that? I want to say they're on, what, they're on 40 or 50 or something, yard line. And then um, they get it on their 50, you know, they get it on the Browns 50. And then all of a sudden, you know, Mitchell drops back and throws a, you know, throws a bomb, right? A Hail Mary. And then one of the Steelers, you know, miraculously catches it. So unless something like that this is going to happen again. You would like to think the Browns are going to win this game. So, okay, the Browns punt the ball, 15 seconds left in the fourth quarter, and they punt the ball, and it lands on the Steelers' four-yard line. So now the Steelers got nine seconds. They got to, you know, start from their own four-yard line. So, of course, Steelers drop back, you know. Mr. Trubisky goes to the huddle. I mean, not to the huddle. I'm sorry. He goes to the, he goes to the line. And they hike the ball, and of course he drops back, and he throws a, I want to say it's like a ten yard, ten yard pass play, and they start doing, you know, the you take it. This is what I like to call it. you take it. No, you take it. No, you take it. You no, you take it. So they're, you know, performing his act, and um, one of the, I want to, I can't remember which which the defensive player, you know, um, knocked the ball. Out of out of out of the receiver's hand, but the ball you know starts fumbling all over the place. It ends up in the end zone. Denzel Ward recovers, recovers it. So now game over, of course, and the Browns end up winning the game, twenty nine seventeen. So the game started off like it was going to be like high school, and both teams. Were, were efficient on offense. Browns, you know, of course, get seven. Then the Steelers come right back, they get seven. And then the Browns, of course, they get another seven and, and then miss, actually miss the extra point. Kate York misses the extra point. So now the Browns are up 13-7. And then the Steelers go right back down the field. And then now they're up 14-13. So halftime was 14-13 Steelers. So the Steelers get the ball back in the second half and Finally, this is where the Browns actually dominated. They prevented the Steelers from moving the ball and um, executing any type of an offense, any kind of a drive. The Browns, um, the Browns defense, you know, put put it on stall for the most part. So the Browns, of course, the Browns. I think they got. I don't because I think they scored. No, I'm sorry, they got a field goal and that put them up 16-14. And then I think they scored in the fourth quarter. And I think it was late in the fourth quarter they scored and that put them up 23-16. So uh overall, the Browns basically for me, you know, the game plan was executed to, you know, to effectiveness. And from what I was told, it, it pretty much, this is how the game plan was supposed to go last week against the Jets. But, of course, everybody know the debacle the Browns had on defense. So, yeah, if you take away, take away that, the, the game plan was almost, you know, basically the same, same one as it was against the Jets. So, for... People who were saying, I'm sorry, 
for people who were saying Kevin Stefanski is, you know, he needs to, you know, hold his players accountable more. He needs to have more of a different type of demeanor besides the, you know, the laid back demeanor people are saying he has currently. For me, I never thought Stefanski was the problem as to why they lost that game last week against the Jets. I never thought he was the problem. I never thought Nick Chubbs was the problem. I didn't even think Kay York was the problem. For me, it was just, it simply was the defense. The defense blew that game. But I understand that, you know, when you're in any type of professional field, you have to conduct yourself as such. So you can't just come out and say things like, hey, look, if this would have happened, we wouldn't have lost. Or you can't say that uh, them MFs on defense, if they would have did that effing job, we would have never lost the effing game. You can't say things like that, basically. You can't be like, oh, the coach, this and that, or them dumb, stupid MFs on, on the back end, how the heck y'all, how y'all don't do basic communication? On, on a on a um offensive play like that that should never ever happen. So you can't say things like that. You really can't say things like that. Period. But you know, for those that's in the professional field, that's like um that's like taboo almost. So yeah, even though I applaud Nick Chubb for what he said prior to the game yesterday, last night. Uh, even though I applaud him for saying that this is on me, I'm the reason we lost the game, I applaud him for that. No, I felt that, okay, he's just being politically correct. He's just trying to, you know, defuse the, the um, and it's not necessarily negative, negativity. He's just trying to, I'll say he's just trying to defuse all the, the um, criticism the Browns defense was, was um, getting at that time. So, yeah, hats off to Nick Chubb for saying what he said yesterday. But, um, yeah, for me, Gabe, get, look, I always get my words tongue twisted. Um, hey, I apologize. I just woke up, uh, my, uh, my, my, my peoples. <laughs> I just woke up. It's 10.08 in the morning. I actually woke up around uh, 9.40, 9.40. A.M. in the morning, I woke up. So, and I, I got a lot to do today. So, I'm, you know, trying to do this quick post-game. You know, my own, my take on the, on the post-game of, you know, what the Browns, you know, the things the Browns did finally to win, when, you know, to actually, you know, not blow the lead and win the, fo win the football game yes, last night against the Steelers. But, um, I think Kevin Stefanski's game plan was basically the same as it was last week against the Jets. I, I never thought nothing was wrong with it. And, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, much, 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 give, 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 give Stefanski some props here. Let's give him some props. He stuck to his game plan last night. He stuck to it. He didn't change nothing. He didn't say anything out the norm he basically went stuck with the same game plan in my opinion that they you know that he executed and put that he put together and executed against the jets and then it actually was a success last night against the steel so for me it was the same game plan basically so uh let me give you a few stats the um browns I guess up until that game, they were ranked 27th in defensive efficiency. So um, I don't I, I don't know where they were ranked after you know after the game last night. But for me, yeah, defense play. You know, defense was decent last night. I saw a few mistakes out there. Like I didn't like how in the first half the Steelers were able to put 14 on the board and. The way they actually did it was in a, was a, it was a, had me thinking that oh my gosh here we go again another quarterback that everybody is saying is not you know not that good 
that he's not even average. Um, he's, you know, he's been playing terrible the last two games. And, you know, oh, the Steelers are actually thinking about benching him too. So here we go. T Trubisky, for me, in the first half, actually had me thinking the Browns were in trouble again that the defense was going to have another letdown. But, no, in the fourth quarter, actually, give got to give him credit, too, in the second half period. Yeah, defense, you know, was decent. It was decent. They, you know, did some things on the field that, you know, showed me that they learned they lesson from last week. But, uh, but besides almost blowing the onside kick again, uh, yeah, defense actually stepped up and, you know, put the game away. Offense did, for me, offense do, did what they always been doing for the past, what, three games now? Um, Amari Cooper and David Njuku, they both combined, they both combined for 190 yards. And they both scored touchdowns in the first half. And um, their, you know, their play, their playmaking ability was on display in the first half. And yeah, of course, it was on a level that everybody expected it to be. So for me, uh, yeah, not that I haven't seen it this season, but uh, yeah, Nujuku, if, if you want to say that Nujuku had a, had a really good game, if you want to say Nujuku, you know, up until last night, you know, yeah, he, he's been playing, you know, decent, but if you want to just say that this game last night, you know, he finally displayed his playmaking ability, I will, you know, I would go for it because, yeah, it actually was, it was actually more on display last night than it was in the first two games uh, of the season. So, and of course, Jacoby Brissett, let y'all let's please give this man some credit. Can we please give this man the credit he deserves now? This is three games in. And I thought last night this was gonna be the game he was finally gonna struggle because of the Steelers defense. But overall, I've been a Jacoby Brissett fan since the first game of the season against the Panthers. He showed me something. He showed me that. He can be a leader of men and can command the team, command the huddle. And uh, he showed me that when the Browns needed a field goal to win the game. And it was a minute and something left in that, that game. And he, you know, calmly took the huddle and calmed everybody down. And he made the, you know, he made the correct throws and he was accurate, and they, you know, they they were, you know, on point. And he, you know, put put the Browns in position to get that fifty-eight yard field goal in order for for them to, you know, win win that game against the Panthers. So J Jacoby Brissett is is I've been a fan this year, so I've been on board. Um, with J Jacoby Brissett as our quarterback. So, uh, he, of course, he had another great game. I'm going to give him, I'll give him that. He had another great game last night. He was making, you know, precise throws. They were accurate. He, you know, wasn't, you know, you know, feeling the pressure or uh, he wasn't, you know, holding the ball or he wasn't out there stumbling on his feet and nothing like that. He was, you know, the play caller, you know, whatever, he, whatever play he was, you know, that was drawn up on the board, he went out there and executed. It's just that simple. So, J Jacoby Brissett, for me, is playing great this season as quarterback for the Browns. So, you, you, yeah, you got that combination going on, and of course Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, they they're, they're going to do what they do. I think I, I like think Nick Chubb, yeah. Nick Chubb at, had over 100 yards rushing. I think he had a touchdown. Um, yeah, he had a touchdown. So, I mean, you, you're going to get what you're going to get out of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. They're two of the best running backs in the game, if not the best running backs in the game, Ted. So, um, yeah. 
happy the Browns won. Uh, at least, you know, we ain't got to hear all the criticism now for, uh, I believe, 10 days until they play the Falcons. So, uh, Browns fan, enjoy the win. Y'all have fun with it. I know I'm going to have fun with it. I know I'm going to, you know, watch, you know, certain things and, you know, keep keep up the best of my ability with the stats. Uh, and, you know, I guess QBRs or rankings. I'm going to do my best to keep up with all that. And, yeah, again, enjoy the game. Y'all be safe out there, you and your families. Y'all stay blessed. And DJ Lottie Dottie, one love to all. Later.